I think uh, this is uh, day number two, and this is right. H squared. That's the way we're going to refer to ourselves now. That's that's the boss man, Forrest Higgins, and this is the old man, uh, uh, Harold Higgins. Yeah. And uh, Forrest, uh, would it be fair to say that as our students are going to have to like um, learn and adjust on the run and be flexible, that an old guy like me has had to adjust and learn new things to make this happen? Absolutely. Just want our students to know that uh, we're working hard for you right now, trying to figure out how to give you the best product we can. Uh, We'll be here for you, and good luck with everything. And don't forget the one on the camera today is uh, Miss Jenny A. Mm -hmm. Miss Sokotoa. Miss Sokotoa, <laughs> right? Yeah. That's what we're That's calling right. her now. Yeah. Miss Sokotoa. Yeah, I like it. All right. Stop. Okay, today uh, our uh, second lesson is uh, going to be about a uh, special right triangle. And what we're going to look at here is we're going to look at the first type of special right triangle, if you remember your days of geometry, is called a 45-45-90 triangle. If you look up here, a 45-45-90 triangle means that the two acute angles are both 45. So 45 plus 45 is 90. And then you take your right angle, which is right here, another 90, and you have a total of 300 300, 180 degrees. Um, so what I'm going to do here is I refer to this as a leg of a 45-45-90. This is also a leg, okay? And this here is what we call the high pot tenus, and I will probably misspell it, and so, but that's okay. So, um, what I'm going to do for you here is we're going to use the Pythagorean theorem that we used yesterday in yesterday's lesson, and we are going to show you how we end up in a 45, 45, 90, that these two sides are the same, and this ends up being x, or the leg, times the square root of 2. So, I like to think of it as this, leg times the square root of 2. So how do I do this? Well. What I'm going to do is yesterday, uh, Mr. Forrest Higgins talked to you about that we're going to use this, which is the Pythagorean theorem. So the hypotenuse is always the side opposite the right angle. And in this case, we're going to call this, um, we don't know what it is. Okay? And what we're going to do here is we're going to take the first leg, which is x, we're going to call this x, so we're going to leave this x squared, where this is also going to be x. So now what we got is how many x squared do we have? We have two x squared, and that is like so. Everybody good so far? Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to undo this square by taking the square root of both sides, and when I do that, that two is not a perfect square. Okay, but the x squared is a perfect square, so when I take the square root to find h, it ends up being x from undoing the square root times the square root of 2. If you look here, this is the same as what I got right there. Okay, and so that would be a 45, 45, 90 triangle. Both legs are the same. And then your hypotenuse ends up being x times the square root of 2. Alright, so the second type of special right triangle is with a 30, 60, 90. So we still have a 90 degree angle, and they add two more 80s, so the other two are going to be 60 and 30. So an easy way to remember and keep the side straight is we still always have a hypotenuse, which is directly across from the right angle. And probably also going to fill this out. And then we have a short side and a long side. Now the 45-45-90 triangle has two congruent legs and a hypotenuse, so this one's a little bit different. One of the legs is shorter than the longer one. And the ratios of each side length is that the short side is going to be equal to x. The long side is whatever the short side is times the square root of 3. times the square root of 3, and 
and then the hypotenuse is 2 times the short side. So if you're given the short side, you can always figure out what the long side and the hypotenuse is going to be equal to. If you're given the hypotenuse or the long side, you just have to solve for x, and then we can run through that. But these values, so the x, the x squared is equal to 2x, are going to shortcut to get to your side length. When Mr. Higgins went through the diagonal theorem to find how he got to the x square root of 2 on the 40 times 40 times 90, he went the long way. But these three numbers give you a shortcut to find your side lengths. Mr. Higgins. So uh, how do I know which leg is the short leg and which one's the long leg? Is there any way I can look like at the angles and that will tell me which leg is the short leg and which way leg so, or which the yes. Great question. You can always figure out the short one because it is across from the 30 degree angle. So the 30 degree angle, since it's smaller, it's going to produce a smaller side. Since the 60 degree angle is a larger angle, it's going to produce the longer side. So directly across from the 60 degree angle will be the long side. So that helps you to see which one's longer, which one's shorter. Always look at where the angles, the 30, 60, are located. And generally the triangles, it'll be relatively easy to show which one's the shorter, which one's the longer. All right, now we're back and we're going to actually take you through a couple of examples of things that you might see in the homework. Uh, so. Here's the process. The first piece of the process is to identify the type of special right triangle given. You got two choices. You're going to either go with the 45, 45, 90, or you're going to go with the 30, 60, 90. Okay? And you're going to end up either looking at angles or sides to help you determine what that is. The first thing I got to find out is I need one right triangle. And this little box here tells me that that is my right angle right there. And so then I look over here and I see that I got a 45. That tells me I'm dealing with the 45, 45, 90. So if I look over here, I can go ahead and write 45 right here. Okay? Then I'm going to identify what side length you are asked to find. Well, what is this side? This side, x, is what I'm trying to find here. This is what we call the hypotenuse. I'm going to just label it h for now. And I'm going to say that h is always given to me by um, x times radical 2. Or I like to think of it as leg times radical 2. Okay? So we look here. These two legs now are the same. All right? And I am given, this is number 3 up there, I'm given the leg. This is... This side length here is 7. So this probably means, Jenny, what's the side length of that one there? 7. 7 as well, because it's what kind of triangle, Jenny? A 45, 45, 90. Perfect. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to look up here and I'm going to say, okay, this is leg times radical 2. I am going to use this here, and I'm going to find out that this is, my leg is 7. And this is radical 2. So, here's what I found. My legs are both 7. Okay, I have 45, 45, 90. And my hypotenuse is 7 radical 2. We're going to go to the second problem here. It's a little bit different. Okay, one of the things that's really important as you look at these is the orientation of the triangle is really, really important. So again, you got to start by finding the right angle. I see I got a right angle here. So uh, I know that this 13 represents what we would call the hypotenuse, because it's opposite. And then I look and see that one of my acute angles is 45, and I know that these two have to total 90, so I know this second one is also 45. So I'm dealing with a 45, ooh, there it is right up there. A 45, 45, 90 triangle. So, I need to be able to find X and Y. Okay? Well, what are those? Those are my legs. So, I know that if I find one of them, I find both of them. Because it's a 45, 45, 90. So, I know that X equals Y. 
So what I'm going to do here is I know the hypotenuse. Well, the hypotenuse in a 45, 45, 90 is equal to x times radical 2. So that's where I'm going to start. All right? Now, I know the hypotenuse is 13. So now I have an equation here. 13 equals x radical 2. So what am I going to do here? I'm going to solve for x. Now, Jenny, can you tell me really what is x? x is the what? The leg. It is. It's the leg. So once I find x, then I have both my legs and I have x and y. That's why this thing is so gosh darn efficient, right? So let's do a little <coughs> um, solving here. I'm going to divide both sides by radical 2. So I'm going to have 13 radical 2 is equal to x. Now, we all know, yes? Can't you not have a radical in the denominator? That is absolutely correct. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to rationalize the denominator. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to multiply by 1. Because that's really 1, isn't it? Radical 2 over radical 2 is like multiplying 1 over 1. So I really don't change the value of this. I'm just going to write it a different way. So I end up with 13 radical 2, or excuse me, 13 radical 2. And then any radical times itself is the radicand, right? So that's like the square root of 4 or 2. Now I can't simplify them. Nothing goes in evenly to 13 and 2. So here's what I know. I know that 13 radical 2 over 2 is x or leg, which is x and y both. Okay, now we're going to go through some 30, 60, 90 examples. So we have a right angle. We have our 60 degree angle, which means the opposite side is our long side. Opposite of the 30 is our short. And this would be our hypotenuse. So with that, we know that our short is just equal to x. Our long is equal to x times the square root of 3. And our hypotenuse equals to x. Now in this example, we're given the, sh the long, and we need to find the short. It's not asking us to find the hypotenuse yet, so we don't need to deal with the 2x. But we can take what we're given, which is that the long side of equals 22, and we can say that x square root of 3 equals 22. Now this looks similar to our last example when we were given our hypotenuse equal 45, 45, 90 triangle, where we had a square root of 2 in there. Now we just have a square root of 3. So to solve for x, which is what we want, which is going to end up being our short side, we're going to divide both sides by the square root of 3. We have x equals 22 over square root of 3. And then again, just like last time, we don't want to square root in the denominator. So we're going to multiply it by three, or square root of 3 and square root of 3, which equals 1. And then we're left with x equals 22 times the square root of 3 over 3. Because square root of 3 times square root of 3 would be something like square root of 9, which equals 3. So since our short side equals x, that would be our final answer. And we can stop there for this problem. Okay, so now we are going to look for x and y, and we are given a square with a side length of 13. So what do we know about a square? What's true about the side lengths? They're all congruent. They're all congruent. So we know that this is going to be equal to that. So what is x equal in this case? 13. 13. So remember, when we're thinking squares, we're thinking congruent sides. Now which of our two triangle options, so we have the 45, 45, 90, and we have the 30, 60, 90. Which of those two have two congruent legs? 45, 45, 90. So 45, 45, 90. So we know that these are going to be right angles. And we know that this can be a 45 degree angle. And this will be a 45 degree angle. Because we have two congruent sides. So you use the hint that we're given a square to know that the two halves are 45, 45, 90 triangles. 
So now that we have a leg equal to 13, and this is our hypotenuse, which equals our leg, or x, times the square root of 2, how can we solve for y? We take our leg, so y equals our leg times the square root of 2. So in this case, to find this diagonal of our square, y is going to equal 13 times the square root of 2. So in that example, we didn't have to rationalize the denominator or anything, because we were given the side length, and we just plugged that into what our hypotenuse would be. Of this triangle. 